Hello and welcome to this week's video, The Return of Colour, after last week's Natural You. But before I get on to this week's Return to Colour, um, I had a question from uh, one of my subscribers, Valerie. Thank you very much for the question, Valerie. Showing how this wood form, woodcut proform tool went together, or ProMaster. Um, well, the cutter is on a short bar, which gets held in this handle, a couple of grub screws there, and on the end there's a spigot here, which uh, you can put another of these handles on. I don't have another of these handles, but the Simon Hope handle were with quick release handles fit on there. So just uh, put it into the collet, a little tighten up of that. The two handles are now joined together and let's see. So it, Oh, comes up to about there. So that does make, can I get it all in, all in? Yeah, look at that, just about. Oh, go that way. Yeah, there you go. So quite a, uh, quite a long tool. So um, I want to give this bit a try in my hollowing rig, which I will get set up sometime soon, honest. Right, now, uh, this week's project still exists. I filmed this a week after I actually made this week's project. And the reason it still exists is because two people I uh, showed it to said they liked it. I was gonna turn it all off and do something different. But you know me, I have no sentiment. And yes, these are my pyjamas. Right, so here we are back in the realm of speed up turning of the back of a platter. And Ian, if you were eagle eyed, you might have noticed the remnants of the colouring that we did that workshop day you came down to see me. Um, right, so uh, I'm speeding through this because you've seen this um, fairly often, just showing how I make my foot, uh, have a little recess. Um, and uh, shaped with a little OG and often I turn it too thin at the top but you can see I've left quite a nice substantial rim. I was intending to turn, colour, finish something all in one day, uh, all in one go actually, which I, which I did. Uh, there's the cut and polish going on the back, gives a nice silky smooth uh, feel in the hand. But I, well, I'm still a little bit undecided about the colouring. Even though a lot of people since uh, I posted some pictures on Facebook and Instagram have been very complimentary about it. But anyway, there we go. I've had another sort of go at it, a variation that will be along next week. Um, but yeah, as I say, I'm still not 100% decided myself. OK, so a little bit slower showing the turning of the front because I don't often talk about the importance of um, the rim shape. Um, I don't like flat rims. I like them either to be slanted, ideally going in, although I have done one or two where they slant out just for a bit of, oh, I wonder what that will be like, um, or a curved rim, which is what's going on this one. You can see here I'm using a sort of sheer cut just to finalise that shape. The parting tool is very useful for putting in to define the extent of the rim. And uh, I had been getting towards slightly thinner rims and this is me going back to something a little bit chunkier. You can see a few tool marks in there still. So again, um, handle down low, cutting on the bottom wing, tool rest quite low and shearing across the surface and then power sanding. And now the bit, of course, that you're all here for, the colouring. Now there is a stage in the colouring where I think, oh, maybe I should have stopped there. Hmm. Yeah, I know some of you have thought that <laughs> often before, um, but I think I should have stopped after I put these two colours on. Maybe I could have done a little bit of splattering of, a, of the black uh, that's coming along shortly. Um, but I'll leave that for you to decide. So the first coat, obviously, yellow. Um, and you can see I put several coats on. It really does show 
that if you just leave it at one coat you're going to have a paler version of the colour than if you build the colour up in several coats. Then a bit of black and just as you see fading that into the yellow perhaps a bit more successfully while it's spinning by the look of things on that outside rim. And then my sort of crackle effect stencil. Now I think after I'd put the black on the yellow I thought it just looked a little bit too um, I want to say austere, but austerity's got a bad name, hasn't it? Uh, maybe just a bit too clean. So this is where I thought afterwards, hindsight, um, that maybe a little bit of spattering of black to put something a little more grungy behind it might have worked. In fact, uh, the weekend just gone, and I'm editing this over a week after it was filmed, I had another go at this and again I just couldn't let myself stop at this stage with the yellow and the black. But I really will give it a go and see if I can carry it off. So a bit of warming up now with, with some orange and um, there is a, a sort of sealing effect by putting this many coats of stain on and you'll see how that gets affected when we when we, oh, when I uh, put the sanding sealer on. Now I wanted to warm it up a little so there's a little ghosting of orange there. Obviously if you hold it a bit further back from the wood you get a slightly different effect and that did seem to warm it up um, very nicely. Um, but oh, let's go for a bit of a stronger contrast I thought. So here we go, a little bit more black going on mostly at the edges leading into it there um, just to sort of frame it I suppose and uh, pulling the airbrush further away just to feather that edge in. Um, so let's see well you can see the colour is quite solid um, you can see the warmth of the colour in there I hope I decided the yellows could be brightened up a little so another coat going on now look what happens. This is after the stain's only been on for maybe 10-15 minutes at most. And you can see that as the sanding sealer goes on, especially if you look at the edges, you can see the grain appearing much more prominently than it had been before. If you can get over the annoying flickering of uh, the colour changing, because I haven't remembered to turn off my automatic white balance on the webcam software. Once the sanding sealer has dried, well, it had almost dried, <laughs> eagle-eyed amongst you might spot a little drag mark or two on the stain. Um, just cut back with that orange uh, pad there, and then the first of three coats of lacquer going on. Now I have been very profligate and had my oil-filled radiator on in the shed and got it up to about 16 or 17 degrees. Positively balmy. Right, coat number two. Uh, and I did leave a good half an hour, if not more, between the coats just to make sure that they had dried. Uh, I know it's always hard to tell from a piece of spinning wood how much the, the shine is building up, but you can see the highlights there on the top. And here's the final coat, which often is the one I put on too thickly and end up with runs and dribbles. So a uh, bit more restrained this time. Right, then a little bit of cutting back and then I'm going to burnish it up with a little bit of chestnuts burnishing um, cream put on with a bit of safety cloth. Now I have in the past rubbed burnishing cream too hard, done it with paper towel, got the paper towel to actually catch on the burnishing cream and then it's a pain to pick it off. So when you are burnishing, hold the paper very lightly, keep it moving, don't put pressure on it just let the, the the heat really I suppose is what's what's doing the work and you can see there the shine really is improved much deeper even though it's spinning and it's hard to see the detail you can certainly see the reflection of the cloth in it and there we go and a lovely shine now this sat in the workshop for a good week and then I decided I'd buff it as well so the lacquer had had quite a long time to dry 
using the chestnut buffing system, which comprises three different wheels and three compounds, Tripoli, white diamond, and then it comes with carnauba wax, but I've also got from them one of their microcrystalline wax sticks. And um, the advantage of that over the wax in a tin is that you don't have to wait 20 minutes before it's ready to be buffed. So you can see here, I think that the shine is um, looking very deep and lustrous. And it's maybe that shine that gives it the sort of amber looking effect that uh, so impressed my friends and made me keep it. Well, there we go. That's the microcrystalline wax, the last uh, of the mops. You can see the shine and uh, I treat the back as well. Took a little bit of pity on it and thought, well, it should feel nice and smooth on the back as well. Um, buffing speed on this one, the last of the mops, these eight inch mops was probably around about 1200 or so. So packing everything away, getting the little arbor that the mops screw into and uh, that's it for another colored platter. And uh, let's see what it looks like. Well, it's still existing. I haven't turned it off. I recorded two bits, two possible endings. One where I did decide to turn it off and one where I thought it was really quite good. I'm somewhere in the middle. I think it probably doesn't do the wood much service, but I do like the colours in it. So perhaps if this was, oh, I don't know, on the outside of a bowl or a vase or a tall hollow form or something, might have a bit more going for it to my eye but um, it was saved by me showing a picture of it to a couple of friends who said oh looks a little bit like amber oh, it does look a little bit like amber but I'm not sure still not sure maybe your comments below will help save it uh, if I take any notice of them the close-ups of course are showing you a bit more um, detail and the videos um, always do. The lighting in my shed ain't great and I only film this on webcam so um, it does pretty well I think. Um, the buffing has certainly raised the finish. Um, if you look at some of the close-ups you'll see how the colour has drained away. It sort of moved a bit when I put the sanding sealer on because I hadn't left it long enough to dry. Now that sometimes is a deliberate choice and sometimes an accident mistake but on this occasion I did know I hadn't left it long enough and it, it gives a sort of distressed look to the colors maybe it would have been better to have waited <sighs> patience that's not my middle name right um, let me know what you think of it thanks for watching thanks for commenting and uh, thanks for supporting my channel and uh, yes I have noticed I've gone over 5,000 subscribers hip hip hooray uh, so there'll have to be some kind of giveaway coming up soon. While I think about that, um, enjoy the rest of the video, <laughs> what little's left, and uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.